Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host. So I um, I shot a video a couple of minutes ago with what I'm about to do on this video, but I couldn't get it to all fit together right. It wasn't uploading, and and so I'm uh, redoing it. So I'm here in uh, Springfield, the global corporate headquarters. Um, Paul is off the truck. And uh, he, so he was just with me basically yesterday um, until this morning. And uh, I picked up a load, or we picked up a load. At, so I, I had a load that was going to Louisville. I picked him up. We took it to Louisville. We dropped it off, and then we went and picked up another load. But we had to kind of backtrack towards East, East Kentucky and we couldn't pick it up right away and so paul kind of shot his 14 hour clock but that load was going out to brea california which is outside of la it's kind of it's near anaheim and um you know my fleet manager is like well you can continue on with the load as a solo once you drop paul off but then because we kind of got delayed i was like mm, i'm not going to be able to make it to deliver on time so I called dispatch I said hey what do you want to do do you want to either push the delivery time back to the right or do you want to put this load on somebody else and they opted for the latter so when we got here about I don't know two o'clock this morning we um, we dropped the load so um, so anyway that's where we are now Paul's gonna start his classes tomorrow for upgrading and by the way Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. I've been wearing my uh, green Vans today in, in celebration of the holiday. And um, so I got a load that just got here to the yard, uh, just got dropped. I'll probably get out of here about three or four in the morning and that's going to Salt Lake City. And then that's a drop and hook out there. And then I can get over to the Salt Lake shop and get my truck worked on. So anyway, and I wanted to include a video of, of a car that was speeding towards a, a red traffic light last night here in Springfield on our way over to the Oasis, or I mean um, the Campus Inn. And I'm, I'm serious neither Paul nor I thought this person was going to stop. And I, I don't think they were going to stop until they saw us because, you know, they, they did stop before they got in the intersection. But if they hadn't, I probably would have T-boned them. I wasn't going, I definitely wasn't going the speed limit. I was just kind of, because really was almost no one out. But, uh, man, I, and it, so I might share that I might actually put the dash cam video up just after this video i'll just upload it you can see what happened and our reaction to it uh there was a little bit of swearing in that so uh you know it's not for little ears but um so anyway what i wanted to talk about and the reason i wanted to get this video out is because i had an epiphany when i was talking about my lease and you know the saying is when you teach something you learn it better than your pupils oftentimes so when i did that video as I'm going through my lease, and I kind of glossed over it when I signed the lease, but I realized there's a buyout clause in my lease with um, a schedule that kind of tells what the payments would be based on how, how far into the lease you are. And so today I called Success Leasing and I said, hey, you know, is that something that's a thing? And they said, yeah, we will honor that clause because it's in your lease. Now, when they said it that way, it kind of made it seem to me like that clause isn't in every lease they do, but for whatever reason it is on this truck. So I said, okay, well, what would that look like? And they said, well, you would submit a request on success leasings page and then you would get a payoff. So I don't know, you know, they, they state some amounts in the lease, but maybe the payoff's slightly different, you know, based on miles or number of days or whatever. But they, they will give you a payoff. Now, here's, here's the hard part, maybe. They will not finance that truck. So it's not like you're buying 
right out of the box from them where they they carry the paper for three years. You have to line up your own financing for that truck. And that could be good, it could be bad, but in any event, you gotta line up your own financing. So what that says to me is, if I still wanna buy a truck, there's a truck I can buy. It's the one I'm sitting in. But in my situation, I have not made payments on the lease of this truck since the inception or since the truck was put in service. I didn't start making making payments on this till 51 um, 53 weeks of the lease had already passed. So one of the calculus, one of the calcul the calculus <laughs> for me, at least the threshold calculus is have I how much have I paid on this truck in lease payments aggregate that and then add it to whatever they say is the purchase price and and then look at that number versus what the truck cost originally kind of disregarding the depreciation of slightly but just say does this make sense in other words they said the original value of this truck, I think was, I'd have to look, but I think they said 151,000. So that doesn't sound out of line. So if the aggregate lease payments that I've made plus the payoff is 151 or less, then that might indicate it's an okay deal. Now, if it's significantly more, um, then maybe I don't do that deal. But here's the thing, if you have a lease that has a buyout clause, you now have another option. You can't order a truck right now, but you might be able to buy the one you're in. And it might make sense if you're super familiar with the truck, you know, you drive it every day, you live in it every day. I've been driving this truck now since it's got like 257 on it. I got it when it had 122. So I've been driving this truck for like 135,000 miles. I'm pretty familiar with it. It's very, other than the APU, it's been very reliable. I think I had replaced um, a, leaf, a leaf spring in the front because the bushing had broken. But I mean, Prime did that. I mean, and it was, you know, it just happens, right? There's bad roads in America. And so this might be an option for somebody. Now, here's the, kind of the kicker. When I came to Prime, I came with the idea that I could buy a truck and then eventually buy, have more than one truck, like kind of start my own little fleet. When you're leasing, you can't also buy a truck. In other words, you can't mix and match lease and purchase. You either have to do one or the other. And if you're leasing, you can only lease one truck at a time. So for right now, the only, the only thing I could do is lease this truck or purchase it. Now, once I purchase it, then I can no longer go back and, and let's say I purchased it and I found a driver who wanted to drive it. And they said, hey, you know, I'm gonna drive your truck for you. We work out a deal like other people have done. And then I say to Prime, okay, I, I need a set of wheels, let me lease a truck. They would not lease a truck to me because I, I own a truck that is contracted with them. So I would have to find, if I wanted a second truck, a truck to buy. Right now, I couldn't order a truck. I, I'm guessing if I had a truck that met their specs, I could bring it to Prime and contract with them. But then, of course, I would have to arrange all the financing and stuff. So this is, this is one of those options where you don't want to paint yourself into a corner. Because let's say that I get to the end, let, let's say I get to the point where this truck's four years old and it's got, you know, 500,000 miles on it. And I'm like, you know, I really would like a new set of wheels. Well, if I bought this thing, they're not going to lease me a new one. Let's say a 2024 or whatever is out by then. They're not going to lease me one because I own this. So I'm betting 
if I buy this, let's say I buy this in the next, you know, three to six months, I'm betting that the purchase program will come back or that I can figure out a way, if I still want to contract with Prime, to lease a truck. The only way I could think that I they would lease to me is if I sold this and then leased. I don't know how that would work. I don't know how close I could have those two events, you know, me selling the truck and them leasing to me, how close I could have those events um, and, you know, if there would be a gap. So it's, it's not without its danger um, in terms of, you know, making a deal work. But if you do have the buyout clause, you can buy the truck you're in. And you're just going to have to analyze whether it makes sense for you. Um, and who knows? You know, let's say the truck was ninety thousand bucks, and I get and I finance it, and I might actually lower my payments. So instead of paying, you know, what am I paying? I'm paying about four forty-two, probably between forty-three and forty-four hundred a month in lease payments. Um, so maybe I could improve my cash flow by having a $3,000 a month payment for, you know, 30 months or something. Um, so, you know, that, it, it just depends on what, um, what you want to do. But I wanted to alert everybody that that is an option. If you see the buyout clause, they will honor it. And, you know, you're, but you're going to have to find your own financing. And that's, you know, that, that's up to you and your, your credit rating is going to impact whether you can find financing, what interest rates you're going to have, et cetera. And interest rates are going up. So those might be some considerations, but I just thought I'd share that with you. And watch the, just watch the quick video. Actually, it's the first, first 18 seconds you'll really see what happened, but if you <laughs> If you want to hear our commentary on it, watch. It's about a minute long, if, and if I can get it uploaded, I will. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.